Motherhood is in crisis in America and in the world. I have something here just to show you. This is Time Magazine. Living the child-free life when having all it means is not having children. When having it all means not having children. The World Health Organization, we have heard a lot about that more than ever before, WHO. They have just recently reported that worldwide, 55 million babies are killed a year in abortion. In America, from 1973 to 2020, we have killed 50 million babies. Motherhood, actually, in culture, is not honored. You, you want to do what when you grow up? You want to be a mother? As if there's no value to it. So I want to ask you a question. The question is, 3,320 years ago, there was a great cataclysmic event, a mountain exploding, God making himself known to Moses and to the children of Israel who had been miraculously delivered from Egypt. But again, we're going their own way. And God wrote on tablets of stone principles that if we would adhere to them, we could live in his promise. But we have a choice to do that. And in those tablets, if you look in Exodus 20, you will see that what we know as the Ten Commandments, the first three are about you and your relationship with God. The fourth commandment is about you and you. The fifth through the tenth are about you and your relationships. And number five is the one that I really want to focus on. Why did God over 3,000 years ago write? So it would be eternal. It would be never compromised and never forgotten. No matter what culture does, why did he do it? Honor your mother and your father. It's simple. Ephesians later said, this is the only promise, the only commandment that has a promise. And the promise is that you will live well in your life. Now, when God gave this promise to the children of Israel, he said, you will live well in this land. But in the New Testament, it says, this promise is connected to your future. And this promise is not about your mother. Well, Debbie, you don't have a clue what kind of mother I have. It doesn't really matter. Because Mother's Day became so commercialized that Anna Jarvis lost all of her wealth fighting to take it off of the calendar as a national holiday because it became so hypocritical. The sale of cards, the sale of flowers, of chocolates, of candy, to have one day of a year to recognize the value of your mother, and then many don't. And so she spent all of her wealth trying to remove what she thought would be wonderful that God had put on the calendar on your calendar and on my calendar, that there's not a day that is not Mother's Day. There is never a moment that we cannot honor our mother. See, it's not about merit. It's not about what my mother is or isn't. It actually doesn't matter what your mother wasn't, isn't, or never will be. To honor your mother is about you. 
And I want to elevate you wherever you are in how you honor your mother after today. I want you to go higher. I want you to be better. I want you to understand really what it means to bring honor. Some of the synonyms of honor are decorate. (laughs) I love to decorate my mother. (laughs) I usually do. I'll fix her hair. I don't choose her clothing. She's very independent, trust me. She knows what she wants, and she has actually very good taste. But once in a while, I'll see her, and I'll adjust her, and I'll decorate. It means to salute another, well, there are hundreds of synonyms for honor. But the few that really stood out to me were those, to celebrate. So within the elements, but you know, sometimes we understand the opposite easier than we understand the positive. To dishonor means to uncover. Don't uncover your mother. So I want to give you three basic elements, essential elements, that will elevate your relationship with your mother. But I want to ask you another question. Why do you think 1,380 years later in the book of Titus, when Paul wrote the letter, Um, to Titus, who was established, they had established a church in a Greek culture. And if you look back in history, you can see that the Greeks really honored women. In fact, some of the earlier, earlier, earlier Mother's Days were from the Greek culture. And he told Titus, a young pastor, as you are establishing a church in this idolatrous culture, I want you to establish something I want you to teach older women that they should teach younger women and teach older men that they should teach younger men. And to the women, he said, I want you to teach them to love their husbands and to love their children. So now we have Paul writing to love your children to mothers. Really? Do we ever really have to tell a mother to love her children? Apparently so. Apparently God knew that culture would bend to a place that this would have to be defined in each generation. Don't think that the young girls, the young women know to honor their mother because culture has bent this. And he said, I want you from relationship to relationship, from generation to generation. I want you to pass these values. So how are the values of honoring our mother and our father, how are those actually retained? They will never be retained through politics, through governments. They will only be retained through relational transference. From me to my mother. Now, from the mother to the child, we love. Do I love my mother? Yes. I don't want to say it's not enough because love is such a huge topic, but it can't be love without honor. It can't. You cannot separate them. It can be love without honor, but you kind of have a mother to the child to concentrate on loving, but from the child, boys and girls, Men and women, from the child to the mother, honor goes up the generation. Then it will be your child that will honor you. You know what's interesting about honor? You can't honor yourself. In order to be honored, you have to be honored by someone else. So the three essential elements, the first thing is you begin by honoring them in your thoughts. So I was remembering, Larry, when we were preparing to give a kingdom uh, award. Is that what we called it? Kingdom award? Kingdom first award. And we were preparing to give it to Jimmy and Karen Evans for their work in marriage today and building the kingdom in many, many magnificent ways. And the first thing that happened as we were beginning this process to bring them honor were in our thoughts. We began thinking 
about Jimmy and Karen Evans. We didn't think about their weaknesses. We thought about their magnificence. We thought about their strengths. We thought about their successes. We thought about their values. We know them, but we didn't need to dig into, well, let's see if they are worthy of this honor because have they ever gotten angry at each other? Well, Jimmy tells you they have, so of course. But are they are they worth this? Are they... Listen, to honor your mother isn't about if she's worth it. This is about who are you. It's about your character. Because God himself knew that the propensity of sin would attack the value of the family. Look what was in Wall Street Journal this week. Here is the headline. This is in the United States of America. Marriage rate plunges to the lowest level ever on record. This is in the history of the United States. Sin will always, and if you look actually in Ezekiel chapter 22, where God had spoken to Ezekiel and he was bringing this prophetic word to the children of Israel who again had gotten themselves in such a mess, and the debauchery that they had entered, plummeted into, in sexual sin and perversion and everything imaginable, he said, you even have contempt for your mother and your father. Because sin never stops, and it will always, no matter what category of sin, it will always attack the family. Always. It will attack marriage, and it will attack honor. It will attack how you relate to your parents because God values parents. You know the Ten Commandments are all about what God values, and he values your parents. The second thing, so your thoughts. Take captive every thought that would be negative, and Philippians 4, 8 says, if they're If there is anything lovely, if there is anything pure, if there is anything right, think on these things. But before it says think on these things, it says if there's anything worthy of praise. Now, there are some times in our relationships, what the word is telling you is you're going to have to think hard right now because your your adrenaline is boiling, you are disappointed, you have been hurt, your mother wasn't sensitive like she should have been, she left you feeling alone, she didn't listen to you, and whatever it is that would cause you to want to put up that wall, the word says, look, let's forget about those things and let's dig hard and make an honor list. Make an honor list. Write it down. If that helps you think about it, make your honor list. Keep it in in your Bible. I sat in my room today. I did it in my mind, Mom, while I was preparing. My honor list is so long for you. But you know what? It's not the case for a lot of mothers and daughters. Their honor list is short, but it doesn't matter because the word says if there's anything, that means that there might just be one thing. Find it and think on that. (laughs) And that will help elevate because here's the reality. Your thoughts become your words. Your words become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your character, and your character becomes your destiny. It all starts with how you think. So practice thinking in an elevated way about your mother. Then when you see see her, I'll go next to words. The second essential element of elevating honor. The second one is words. But I just want to say a couple of things about words. You will speak what you think out of the abundance of your heart. So you're going to make your correction in your mind. So when you are together, you have a sense of discipline and purpose and focus when you are in each other's presence. And so you're not going to just be uh, carefree and and spontaneous and not on, on guard, meaning on guard with the fear of the Lord in your life that you've thought 
about how can I give honor to my mother through my words. But I just want to say something here. Everything doesn't need to be said. There are a lot of things that you just need to let go and don't say it. You may think it, you may feel it. It may be true about her, but you don't need to say it. And I was reminded of an experience that we had in our own family. And, um, oh, my goodness, this, this man was probably in his 60s. His mother had raised him, but she actually was a stepmother because she married his father, who was a widower. So he had lost his birth mother. And in their 60s, the mother... The stepmother who had raised him and loved him, who had raised him and loved him for some reason in this conversation, I don't know, I think in the church we got all messed up with psychology and, you know, all these, well, you need to say what you feel, and I don't know about all of what caused him to think he needed to do this. But he said to her with accusation, I never felt loved by you. You never went to one of my football games. Now, wait a minute. To put this in perspective, he graduated from high school in 1940. So can you imagine in the 1930s what a football game was? Well, of course you didn't go to the football games. You're in the fields working. I mean, were there games? Were were there stadiums in the 1930s? And you know what? It was something he didn't need to say. She never forgot that. It broke her heart. Guard what you say. Guard the words that you say. Don't say things to your mother that will break her heart. It's not necessary. It doesn't matter what wasn't. You cannot change what wasn't, but you can change what will be. It's in your hands. It's in your decision. And then, of course, words become actions. So in your actions, your actions are what to do. In the Ten Commandments, this honor your mother is a verb. Now, we have a noun that's honor, but the verb honor is to honor. It's it's to take action to elevate and esteem, to salute, to decorate, to think about and to say the best things possible that you can say about your mother. And always remember that honor includes celebration. There's always a ceremony in honor. Yes, we can acknowledge birthdays. We can acknowledge today as Mother's Day. But to honor is actually a celebration each time we can be in each other's presence. Think about at least one thing that you can say positive to your mother. Your mother needs to hear you say thank you. She needs to hear you say I love you. And you know what else? Mothers need to be touched. We need your hand on our shoulder. We need your arms around us. We need a pat from you. Action. Take action on on your honor. I want to close by reading a scripture final. And it's Deuteronomy. See if I can find it. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I know since I've been talking to you. Your mind is going so many directions. Directions of thinking, I'm not doing too bad. But most of us, I think, are thinking how I can improve. And that's okay. That's why we teach you. That's why we give you the word. So the Holy Spirit can bring conviction is a good thing. We cannot have change without conviction. And the thing that I prayed the most before I came to talk to you tonight is that the Holy Spirit would reach your heart and reach your mind, not with condemnation ever, but with conviction. And say, you know what? I've made it about my mother. And God, I'm assuming the responsibility for the verb to honor, to honor 
the actions, how I think, what I say to her. So tonight, it's a choice. And I just want to read to you your choice from Deuteronomy 30, verse 19. Today I have given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and cursings. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice that you make, and I'm calling on heaven, from heaven on earth, to witness the choice that you are making tonight. What kind of person do you want to continue to be? A person who uncovers everybody? Don't you remember Noah, the first crop of grapes? I'm not sure when he enjoyed that delicious fruit of the vine that he knew it could in drunken him, but it did. And his son saw him in a condition that they would have never imagined their father would have been in. They covered him all right. They backed up. They didn't even look at his nakedness. There's no reason to look at your mother's nakedness. Don't uncover. Protect her. Appreciate her. And honor her. You can make that choice. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants, so you, so your daughter will honor you, so her son will honor her. You and your descendants will live and they will live in honor, to honor. Honor is a position in life that you choose to live for yourself, regardless of how others behave. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make that choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. This is the key that your days may be long. The promise that went with the commandment. Will you make a choice tonight? Go ahead where you are, bow your head. You may be listening alone. You may be listening in a group in your home like we are. And just take a moment. It's a moment of confession. To say, God, I've been a little um, permissive with myself. And I want to rein myself in. I want to elevate who I am in relationship to how I think about, talk about, and act when I'm with my mother. I'm sorry, Lord, for the things that I've done. But I'm not staying there. I can't wait to see my mother next time. She won't even know what's happening. But I'll just reach over and touch her. Give her a little squeeze. A smile in her face. Lord Jesus, you're faithful. You are faithful. I pray for every family that anything that sin has attempted to disintegrate and destroy, that there's miraculous healing. Talk about the dead being raised. We are raising the dead of values of the family. What has died in our relationships, we raise them and bring them to life. In the name of Jesus, and I speak life to you because I know that you have chosen life for you and for your next generations. 
I love you so much, and I'm looking forward to your great future.